Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer. And when I saw Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, join the other imperialist thugs, Obama, Cameron, and Sarkozy, in trying to kill Muammar Gaddafi, a man I consider a hero, who didn't steal from his people, spent his money giving them the best quality of life in Africa, free education, free health care, no taxes, 50000 per couple who get married, best human rights record in Africa, and interest-free loans. And now we see our thugs destroying their infrastructure, bombing their hospitals, bombing their schools, and destroying everything he built. And I'm ashamed to say that I'm Canadian when I see this is the first time that Canada has bombed another country who never hit us back. And uh, so I decided I was going to read Muammar Gaddafi's book, The Green Book, so that people have an idea of the thoughts of the man that our thugs are trying to kill. So in the first part, Mr. Gaddafi explained what was wrong with the democracies in the Western world, given that Parliament does not represent the majority but represents a small political party, an actual minority. And he's trying to figure out a way of implementing direct democracy. Now, with the advent of the internet, different story. But this was written in 1988, before the internet. So he was trying to come up with a way of giving his people direct democracy before the internet. So let's see how his system would have worked. And I read the whole book at johnturmel.com slash gathafi.wmv. So if you want to find out the whole book, yes, that's where you can see it. Otherwise, these are just going to be excerpts. Part one is Mr. Gaddafi's problems with how democracy works in the world. And part two, this explains how he thinks we can come up with direct democracy before the age of computers and the internet. Obviously, it's going to be easy now to get democracy very soon. But before the Internet, how could you have direct democracy? Here's his answer. People's conferences and people's committees. People's conferences are the only means to achieve people's democracy. People's conferences and people's committees are the ultimate accomplishment of the people's struggle for democracy. In fact, direct democracy is the ideal and undisputable method of government. But the virtual impossibility of gathering all the people together at once in order to discuss, consider, and decide their politics has caused nations to depart from this concept of direct democracy, which has therefore remained a utopian ideal far removed from reality. Well, not that far removed from reality now that we have the Internet. And let's face it, when did Muammar publish this first? 205, first, in 1988, so quite a while ago. He didn't know about the internet coming where we'd all be able to vote on everything. There's only one theory and one method of true democracy. The dissimilarity and diversity of the forms of government claiming to be democratic is evidence enough that they are not. The authority of the people has just one face. And this can only be realized by one method, the establishment of people's conferences and people's committees everywhere. Without these, democracy is unattainable. Firstly, the people are divided into basic people's conferences. Each of these selects its own secretariat. The masses of the basic people's conferences will then select people's committees to replace government administration. From then on, all public institutions will be run by people's committees, which will be answerable to basic people's conferences, which dictate policies and oversee their implementation. Thus, both the administration and supervision become the people's responsibility and the outdated definition of democracy, democracy is the supervision of the government by the people, is finally done away with. It is replaced by the true definition Democracy is the supervision of the people by the people. So that's pretty direct democracy. In this way, the problem of the instrument of government is solved. That's right, it's not one political party running the show. 
and the dictatorial instruments of power finally disappear. The people become the sole instrument of government and the dilemma of democracy in our world is finally resolved. The legislation of society. It is invalid and undemocratic for a committee or an assembly to be empowered to pass legislation for society. What then is the legislation of society? Who passes this legislation? What is its relevance to democracy? Natural legislation in any society is grounded either in religion or customs. And any attempt to make legislation for a given society derived from sources other than these two is invalid and illogical. The norms of the dictatorial instruments of government have replaced the norms of nature. Man-made law has replaced natural law. And as a result, criteria have been lost. Man is essentially one and the same everywhere, physically and in terms of sensibility, and that's the reason why natural law is the logical law for mankind. The imminent danger threatening freedom lies in the absence of the real legislation of society, which has been substituted with man-made laws. The importance of this legislation, which is not man-made, is in its being the criterion used to distinguish between right and wrong between what is true what is false, between the rights of individuals and their responsibilities. Freedom becomes threatened when society lacks a sacred legislation of confirmed statutes, not liable to change or substitution by any instrument of government. It is rather the responsibility of the instruments of government to conform to the legislation of society. Unfortunately, throughout the world, people today are governed by man-made legislations which are liable to be changed or abrogated depending on the power struggle among the competing instruments of government. Codes of man-made laws derived from man-made constitutions are abundant with physical punitive measures against man, whereas customs contain few such measures. Customs call for spiritual, non-physical, but deserving punitive measures. These customs are inherent in religion in which most physical punishments are postponed punishments, and most judgments are passed as exhortations, guiding instructions, and answers to questions, making them the most appropriate legislation which is respectful of human beings. In religion, immediate punitive measures are taken only in extreme cases for the benefit of society. Religion embraces customs, and customs are an expression of the natural life of the people. Therefore, religion is an affirmation of natural legislation. Non-religious legislation and legislation which is not derived from customs are inventions of man against man. Who oversees the progress of society and warns of any deviations from the legislation of society when they occur? This is the responsibility of the society as a whole. Democracy means all society overseeing its progress. This can be achieved through the democratic instrument of government, which results from the self-organization of society into basic people's conferences. The people are the instrument of government, and as such, they are their own overseer. In this manner, society thus becomes by itself the overseer of its legislation. How does society rectify its course in case of any deviation from its legislation? When the instrument of government is a dictatorship, which is the case of existing political systems in the world today, a society aware of its deviations from the legislation has no means to express its position and rectify the system other than through violence. It has no other option but to rise in revolt against the instrument of government and the seat of power. However, even if violence or revolution are expressions of society's attitudes towards such deviations, Participation in the uprising would not involve the whole of society. It would be an act undertaken only by those who are capable of such initiative and possess the courage to be outspoken and pronounce the will of society. Yet, a popular uprising would in itself constitute a dictatorial incident because this revolutionary initiative shall necessarily create opportune circumstances for another instrument of government to rise to power in the name of the people. In other words, the instrument of power would still be a dictatorship. Violence and the use of force 
as instruments of change are undemocratic, but they happen as an outcome of the development of an undemocratic condition. Any society which still finds itself in this vicious circle is a backward society. How is this then to be resolved? The solution is for the people to become the instrument of government, to organize themselves into basic people's conferences and people's committees. In such a system, any deviation from the legislation of society would be dealt with through the democratic process rather than through the use of force, the media. Freedom of expression is the right of every natural person, even if a person chooses to behave irrationally to express his or her insanity. The democratic press is the mass media published and broadcast by a people's committee, and I better have access to it, uncensored, comprising members from all the various groups in society without exception. Okay, to summarize, the era of the masses rapidly advancing towards us to overtake the era of republics excites the emotions and dazzles the eyes. But inasmuch as it heralds the advent of real freedom for the masses and the blissful emancipation from the chains of all instruments of government, it is also the harbinger of a chaotic and tumultuous era if the new democracy, the authority of the people, were to suffer a relapse. Such an era would bring back autocracy or the rule of one social class, tribe, sect, or political party. Therefore, this is genuine democracy, but in reality, the strong always rule. That is to say, those who are strongest in society hold the reins of government. 